Next, in my subseries, I'll explain the change we make to the model to accommodate the early exercise feature. So now the model will handle an American style option, which can be exercised before maturity. Most of the model doesn't change. Parameters don't change. Stock price simulation doesn't change. Terminal values don't change. When we do the backward induction, the only thing that changes for an American style option is that these interim nodes now become a maximum function. They are the maximum of the expected discounted value, which I'll review again, and the intrinsic value. And that is to acknowledge that at these interim nodes, unlike with the European style option, this American style option can be exercised here. So it's natural to assume that the value here would be the higher of expected discounted value or intrinsic value. So I'll use here the same assumptions that we find in John Hole's example 13.10. And the big difference here is we're going to do an American style option as opposed to a European style option. That capital P here denotes American style, meaning that this option can be exercised prior to maturity. And this is one of the use cases for the binomial model. That Black-Scholes-Merton, after all, is restrictive in its assumptions. The classic Black-Scholes is really designed for a European option. When we want to add features like early exercise, a la American style, it's just much easier to use the binomial model. Binomial model is infinitely flexible. So for my assumptions, I'm following Hull's example 13.10, asset or stock price at time of purchase. So that's really S sub zero, right? $50, the strike is 52. That means as a put style at the time of purchase, we're in the money. We have $2 of intrinsic value for the put. My time step is one year. So this is really unrealistic. Very, uh, the time steps are usually much shorter. Time step of one year with only two steps, unrealistically truncated binomial tree, means that we have an American style option with two years to maturity, right? One, two steps. Each step is a ridiculously large one year. My volatility is 30% per annum, always per annum, input assumptions here, and the risk-free rate, 5% also per annum. In the previous videos, I've covered how we calculate the parameters. In particular, the P is the probability of an up jump, and therefore, because it's binomial, meaning either each node or branch of the tree either goes up or down, that means that the down probability is 1 minus the P, or in this case, 49%. And those are solved for us owing to that elegant risk-neutral valuation framework that I described two videos previously. Also in this example, I will use the volatility to inform the calculation of the U and D. Those are very simple. I covered those in the previous video. And... This is matching U and D to the volatility input so that the standard deviation of this binomial variable implied by the U and D equals or approximately equals this 30%. So those are solved for us, very simple. We have those parameters and then the two steps, right? We start today at that stock price following this asset uh, value initially and it either goes up or down per the tree, right? If, if it goes up, it goes up by multiplier, multiplying the 1.35 or up by 35% in this case where the volatility is full, fully 30%. And that's a one year difference. So that's why that's so large. On the other hand, the $50 could go down to $37.04. So we build out the tree, only two steps, and then we have three terminal values. And so that brings us to the backward induction. And what we have there is we start with the terminal values and these terminal values are intrinsic values. So that with the put option here, if the stock jumps up all the way to $91.11 with a strike price of 52, well, that's deeply out of the money. Intrinsic value is therefore zero. And you'll notice I use a formula here where I take the asset price and subtract the strike price and then multiply that by this 
toggle value here, which will be one for a call, negative one for a put. That allows me to use the same formula for that switches for a call or a put. That's all that is. Um, and my intrinsic value you can see here is $24.50, my terminal value, if this stock takes two consecutive down jumps and goes all the way down to $27.44 after that, after all that's a put. So the intrinsic value here at this node would be the payoff for a European option, uh, $24.56. And as we said before in describing the binomial, uh, maybe the most difficult step here uh, is the expected discounted value for each of these nodes, right? So the terminal nodes are all intrinsic value at maturity because the payoff on a European option is the intrinsic value at maturity. But these inter all of the other nodes are expected discounted value. So the $12.42, for example, if I take that right here, then its formula the $12.42, you can see it right up here, is equal to, it's the expected value of the two forward nodes, right? That's the $2 and the $24.56. So there's a 51% probability of this being the value, which is $2 plus a 49% probability, that's the down jump, multiplied by the 24.56. And so this is the expected value of these two, between these two forward nodes. Really, it's the mean or weighted average value weighted by the probabilities, but it's one year forward. So we discount it continuously by dividing by E raised to the risk-free rate 5%, 5% multiplied by one year in this case. So divide by the 5% or you can see that that's the same as uh, multiplying by E raised to the negative 5%. But that then discounts the expected value back to this node. And so we call that, I'm just going to abbreviate, the expected discounted value. I like it because it applies fundamental financial building blocks. However, this then, and then we do that again um, for, for this note here, and we get the $6 uh, and about 25 cents. However, what we've done here is we've treated this like a European style option, which is to say, we assume it will, it can only be exercised at maturity. So now I'll show you the Next page, which makes uh, the, the single adjustment that um, ha treats this now as an American style put. So now I really do comport with Hull's figure 13.10. And this is gonna be really straightforward because all of the inputs and parameters are the same. And because the up and down are the same, so is the stock price, the simulated stock price tree. These values are all unchanged. Further, the terminal values are unchanged as well. The only difference here when we switch to the American style put is the treatment here of these, all of the interim nodes. And so I'll, I'll just isolate on the $14.96. You may notice my formula makes one adjustment. Here's the part Hopefully you can see right up above here. I'm going to just draw here. Here's the part that's unchanged because that is my expected discounted value, same as I did before. What we're doing now for each of the nodes, each of the interim nodes is we're saying they are equal to the maximum of the expected discounted value that we did before or the intrinsic value. That's really the only change to all of the interim nodes, not to the final nodes, which continue to be just intrinsic value. That's the only change required to switch this model to a, uh, an Amer treat it as an American style option, in this case, a put. 
is that we now have this maximum function. And hopefully the logic is somewhat intuitive. The idea previously at, at one year, that two year option could not be exercised. Now it can be exercised at one year. And if the intrinsic value is greater than the expected discounted value, rational agent would exercise the option. So it should have the higher value. So in this case for this $14.96 node, right? What we have is a case of a maximum of the same $12.42 that we calculated previously, which is the expected discounted value. However, here at this node where the stock jumped down to $37.04, the option is now much further in the money. And you can see strike price of $52 minus $37.04 is an intrinsic value at that point in time under this simulation of $14.96. So the, that's the value used in the max function. That's the change. You might notice this node above here at 93 cents does not change. After all, at this node, the intrinsic value would be zero. That option would be out of the money. However, this node changes and and it feeds into the calculation of this node, which is the price of the option. And here at time zero, that intrinsic value is only $2. So that's not what's getting used. The expected discounted value is getting used. However, it's informed by a slightly higher value at this node so that it re increases to $7.43, which was an increase from what we did before. We got about $6.25 since uh, six four six, I'm sorry, six dollars uh, point two four six was the was the value we got for this option under European style, and you can see now it's increased to seven dollars and forty three cents. So that's a material increase because we've now treated it like an American style put, and that acknowledges the fact that this option could be exercised early. And in this model, there is a path under which it would be exercised earlier. This node gets higher value, so the final price as an expected discounted value function gets a higher value as well. And hopefully that outcome is intuitive. As an American style put, this option should be worth at least as much as its European style counterpart. So that's all we do to handle the American style options in the binomial. If this video is helpful, subscribe to the channel and we'll keep you updated. Thanks.